We are on Chav Ches Amad Beis on the bottom. Hamar of Yehuda, Zibura, Udecharze Silu, Vesimta, Utikeevle Eina, Vaasi Iluya Ishta, Kulu Be Mone Sakanta. If you have a stung by a hornet, or if you have a thorn that's stuck in your basar, or if you have a blister, or if your eyes hurt, and along with all of these things you have a fever, then you should not be bathing. A bath will be a sakana if you have any of these things with a fever. Chama lechama, v'silka letzina, v'chilufa sakanta. Now we're going to talk about different things that are remedies. And if you do the opposite, if you use one for the other, it's going to be dangerous. So if you have a radish, you use that for next time you have fever instead of the Tylenol. The silka latina, and you should use silka beets when you have the chills. But whatever you do, don't use a radish when you have the chills and a beet when you have fever because that's a sakana. The chilufa sakanta. Chamibe lakrava, use a hot compress when you have a scorpion sting. Ukrire lizibura. And use a cold compress when you have a hornet sting. V'chilupa sakanta. And the opposite is going to be a sakana. Chamime lesilu. Use a warm compress when you have a thorn. And Rashi points out you just said not to take a full bath when you have a silu. That's when you have a full bath. But in terms of using a warm compress, use a warm compress for a thorn. Ukrire lechas venisa. Use a cold compress for a scab. V'chilupa sakanta. And the opposite is a sakana. Chala litzibure umunini litanisa vechilupa sakanta. You should use vinegar after bloodletting. And you should use little dugim after a tanis. What's that? Herring. You should eat a lot of herring after a tanis. And the opposite is a sakana. Don't eat herring after bloodletting. And don't use vinegar after fast. Which again, interesting. See, Allah Chalamaisa, like we don't necessarily, we're not so makbe necessarily not to have vinegar after a fast. But he's saying over here, one should not have a vinegar after a fast. Tachle, I don't know exactly what, we keep saying. very strong vinegar too, we don't know. Right, in a chanami. What's cress? What exactly is cress? Toothpaste. Not toothpaste. <laughs> C-R-E-S-S. This is cress like in a parsley thing? Yeah, it's some type of, uh, yeah. That's what I thought. It's some type of vegetable. Tachle visibure sakanta. You shouldn't have cress. Now we're talking about before bloodletting. Before bloodletting, make sure not to eat any cress. Ishta vitsibura sakanta. Don't bloodlet if you have fever. Makes sense. Kaivena vitsibura sakanta. If your eyes are bothering you, you have a real problem with your eyes, don't bloodlet. Shani lidag dam. Shani lidam dag. Shlishi lo sakanta. You can have two days after eating dog, you can have dam. Really, the second day later. That means you could have herring and then give blood the next day. You can have herring after giving blood the next day. Shani is the day before or the day after. Shlishi lo sakanta. But whatever you do, don't have herring two days after you give blood. So if you're going to have to have herring and shul, don't give blood on Thursday, basically. Says the Gemara. Tane Rabbanan. Tane Rabbanan. Hamek is dam lo yochal chagbash. If you're going to bloodlet, or if you did bloodlet, you should not go ahead and eat chagbash. Lo chalav. Milk, velo gvina, velo betzelim, velo shchalim. Don't eat milk, cheese, onions, or cress. Im achal, if you eat them, amar bayin, nesa reviyasa dechala, reviyasa dechamra, vinarva vinu ba de adade viniste. Then you should take a revius of vinegar, a revius of wine, mix them, and drink it. That's if you eat one of these things after bloodletting. Vichi mefane, if you're going to defecate, don't do it in the city. You're going to have a, um, it's going to smell pretty bad because of what you ate and the fact you were make is dam and it was dangerous. Or seemingly after you went ahead and had this potion, you should go outside of the ear to the Mizrach because the Mizrach Ruach is not Chazaka. It's fascinating. The Ruach Mizrach is not Chazaka. Therefore, it's not going to carry the smell into the city, which would be not very pleasant for other people. Amr of Yeshua ben Levi. 
Malin unkli b'shabes. You could straighten your unkli on Shabbos. My unkli. What's an unkli? Amr Biyava is tumcha deliba. It's some type of basar. It sounds like it's to me that it's dofne basar shetach asalev. Something to do with making you, it's hard for you to breathe if it's pressing. I don't think it's internal. It sounds to me like it's external, unless somebody has a different interpretation. It sounds like it's some type of external thing that you want to push that's blocking your lave. Mm-hmm. Unless it's ri- it ribs. It's, it's the ribs. ribs. So I thought ribs. maybe it's the ribs, right? So if it's internal, it's the ribs. So your ribs are not in the best position, so you could straighten them on Shabbos. Okay. So Mayusi, so what is the, because, it, because it's Sakana, but in general, when your ribs are not straight, how do you straighten them? Maisei kimona kruya, you bring a um, spoonful of cumin, vinene, and mint, Agdina, some type of bitter grass, v'sitri, savory, I don't know exactly what that is, v'avadita, and hyssop. So now, what do you do? You bring all this, all these different raw ingredients, liliba b'chamra, if you need it for the ribs that are bothering you, so you mix them with Chamra, you mix them with wine, and you drink the concoction, and it straightens out your ribs. Pretty cool. V'simanecha, how do you know? V'yayin yisamach levav enosh. If you want to remember, yayin is yisamach levav enosh. Yayin is connected to the lev. L'ravcha, if you have asthma, then you mix all of these things b'maya. How do you know that? V'simanecha, how do you remember that? It's not proving that you know it, it's just to remember it. V'ruach Elohim merachev es al panei If you want to fix your ruach, your asthma, then you should drink a mayim with this stuff. L'chuda B'shechra. If you're having problems with a holy isha yoledes, woman's having trouble giving birth, she has two options. She could either take an epidural or she could just drink this concoction with beer. Chances are, second one will uh, work just as well. V'simanecha ve'kada al shechma. The kada al shechma. Fascinating. Okay. Ravachad brei derava. Shachaglu lekula badidadi. Now, in terms of making the potion, there's two different opinions. He would take all the ingredients, he would throw them into a pot. Veshachale mane chomesh etzbosa. He would take his five fingers, a fistful of the stuff. Veshasile, he would put it into whatever he needs to put it into, depending on what the disease was. He would put it into water or wine or whatever. Sort of like, think of like your metamucil. You put it into water, wine, orange juice, whatever you do, and you go ahead and you drink it. Rav Ashi, Rav Ashi had a similar thing. He didn't take a fistful of the stuff, but he would go ahead and he wouldn't put everything into one bowl. What's your big finger and your small finger? This. So he would go ahead and he would take a pinch of each. He would put them into five bowls. I don't know exactly why, but they felt that, the first opinion felt you have to put them all together for it to work. Here you put them into five little bowls. You take a pinch from each bowl, put it into your cup, and then you mix it with, again, the water, the beer, or the wine, and you drink it. Amr of Papa. I tried this at home and didn't work. Until a Yishmaeli told me, You need to take a new kli, a small kli. And what should you do with it? Fill it up with water. Virami bein put in it, Tarvada de dusha de talila be you need to take some type of devash that sat out overnight underneath the stars. Devash that sat out underneath the stars. And you take that and you drink it. I did that and I was cured. Okay. Tana Rabbanan. There are six things that will always heal you and it will be a full healing. Krov, cabbage, vitardin, beets, ume sisin yevesha. The, some, I don't know what pool yul is. What, how, does he pronounce, how does he define pool yul? Something that's dry that you soak in water and you drink it. What's me sisin, anybody? Chamomile? No, what does that mean in English? Chamomile? Yeah, what is it? Uh, it's, it's a herb. It's, a, it's an herb? It's, 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 like, it's like the tea that we have. Yeah. They have like the chamomile tea. Yeah. yeah, I don't like that stuff. I like the fruity stuff. The kebas, a maw. What part is that? That's the jaw? No. The maw is the jaw. You take, you take the jaw of the animal, the heres, you take the rachem of the behemoth, Vioceras akabed, or the diaphragm. I'm going to stick to the cabbage, the beets, and the mesisin. <laughs> or you take the maw, the heret, and the diaphragm. It's fascinating that they knew any of this stuff. Vyesh omrim and safsei. This is the 
This is the uh, source for Kiddush Clouds. V'yesh omrim av dagim kitanim. Other people say that dagim kitanim herring is good for you, specifically on Shabbos morning during the Avtora. V'lo od el ha'sha dagim kitanim mafrin umar bin kol gufo shal adam. Not only that, but herring is good. It's mafre umar I don't know exactly what that means, but it sounds like it uh, multiplies in your body and uh, is very healthy for you. Fascinating. It must be about chlokes. The, 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 what you said, translate here is a, you said is a diaphragm. I know yeah. our school translates it as diaphragm all the time in the chumash. Other sources are translated as the lobe of the liver. Interesting. Okay, very interesting. But these are definitely from an animal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're eating these. Okay. Yeah. How, how comfortable are they with the translations into English from these things? I don't know. Again, I'm I'm usually using Rashi unless I don't know what Rashi says, and then I'll look it up. But I try to use Rashi. So over here, Rashi says Pulyol. I don't know what Pulyol is. That's why I said. But in general, you know, Rashi says Harris is Rachma Shel Behema. Your Teres Hakaved is Tarpasha de Kabda. The Kaved is the again. I, could be the liver. Could be the diaphragm. I guess. Talk to Gemara. So you should have herring. And then there are ten things that are bad for you, and it'll make it even worse if you're sick. Eluhain, haochel basar shor shuman, you shouldn't eat fatty meat. Uh oh, basar tzli, you shouldn't eat roasted meat. Uh oh, basar tziporim, you shouldn't eat poultry. Beitz tzluya, you shouldn't have roasted eggs. Sounds like the whole seder. Ushchalim, kress, vitaglachas. So I'm not sure. What the shaving? Shavings of what? Shavings of an animal, seemingly, no? Tiglach and together, getting a shave and going to the bathhouse. aha. Shaving and then going to the bathhouse. So you're not actually ingesting these things. This is when you shave and then go to the bathhouse right after each other. Ugvina, it's just interesting because that's the only thing you're not eating. Ugvina, cheese, the kaved, again, either the diaphragm or something of the like. Vyesh omrim afe gozim, you shouldn't eat nuts either. Yesh Omer and Af Kishu, and you shouldn't eat cucumbers either. Oh, I've been telling my wife that for a long time. Tana Debe Rabbi Yishmael, Lama Nikra Shman Kishu, and why is it called cucumbers? Because they're just as bad for your body as swords in your body. Okay? I'm assuming again, Allah Almighty said, we don't necessarily pass like this. They must have been talking about a specific type of cucumber. But at the end of the day, cucumbers sound like they're not healthy. What? Large ones. Small ones are good. Ones. Small ones are good, but the larger ones are not good. We buy the large ones in the store all the time. You tell your wife not to buy the large ones? I think it's like with. At a certain size, depending upon the species, the strain. You know, uh, what is it? Uh, zucchini. zucchini. Zucchini does that. Zucchini, if it's smaller, it's sweet. But when it gets real long, real big, it starts to turn bitter. Uh huh. Cucumbers okay. Be the same Interesting. Thing. Again, I'm not sure that we pass on this. Okay. So they sell cucumbers in the store yes, that are big. Different kind of cucumber. Different kind of cucumber. Okay. Anyway, for me, this whole thing, even though we, we, we try to liven it up a little bit, for me, it's all fascinating that they knew any of this stuff and that they had a tradition about this stuff. And obviously, this stuff, again, we spoke a little bit yesterday after this year, but seemingly this stuff worked. It wasn't just some folk medicine, unless one wants to argue that they would get better anyway after seven days and they were just using it as an excuse. That's what somebody said, but I would venture to say that, you know, it worked and they used it and today we can't necessarily rely. And the Rambam talks about the idea that we shouldn't rely on these things today because as the times change, it's not that the Gemara is outdated, it's just as the times change and things change and fruits change and the society changes and the weather and nature and everything changes. So these things are not necessarily applicable today, but they were very much applicable and 100% MS at the time of the Gemara. Vein mistarpen man mechomakom. Shouldn't get a haircut from Novei Kochavim. When you're getting a haircut from Ovei Chavim, if you want to get a haircut, you need to look in the mirror while you're getting it. Wow. And if you're giving a non-Jew a haircut, you can't cut his locks. His locks, not Jewish locks, L-O-X. L-O-C-K-S. You can't cut the locks that he has on his hair because they would grow those for Avodah Zarah, and if you would start playing around with them, you'd be involved in Avodah Zarah. So let's figure this out. Why exactly do you have to be looking at the mirror? 
If you're in Rishos Rabim, what do you need a Marif for? We said you can get a haircut in Rishos Rabim because he's afraid to kill you. If you're in Rishos HaYachid, we said it's us to get a haircut because he's going to kill you. Fascinating. If you look at yourself in the mirror while he's doing the haircut, then it looks like you're a Chashav man who really cares what he looks about like. And if you look like you're Chashav, he's going to be afraid to kill you because he's afraid what the retribution is going to be. If you don't look in the mirror, then it looks like you don't care about yourself. Clearly, nobody else cares about you. And Lamaisa, he'll kill you. Again, another lesson. You can learn lessons from all these things. And it is true. It is true in life that you don't have to be haughty about things. But many times you're viewed the way that you view yourself. And if you view yourself as a Nebuch, then everybody else views you as a Nebuch. If you view yourself as somebody who's strong and somebody that can accomplish things, so then people view you as that as well. So there is some truth to this. Right. If the Miraglim view themselves as being small, and we were small in their eyes, so then they're going to be treated as small. Zok de Gemara. Rav Chana Bar Bizna have a mistaper me over kachavim b'shibale dinarda. He was getting a haircut in the shibale dinarda. This was outside of the city, but it was like sort of semi rishus harabim. Amar le, so they said to him, Chana Chana yoy koecha lezuga. Your throat is uh, calling out to get cut. Amar tisi li, you're right. I deserve to be cut. To avdi kerev de avre ad rebbe meir. Because I went against Rabbi Meir, who says I can't even get, even though Narada is seemingly Rosh Hashanah, I can't go against, I went against Rabbi Meir, who says you can't get Erekat even in Rosh Hashanah from an Ove Kuchavim. Vadarabana lo Avar, was he not over the Darabanan? Amr der Amr Rabbanan, Rosh Hashanah Rabbim, Rosh Hashanah Yachin Mi Amor. Did Rosh Hashanah, so the Gemara says, no, the Rabbanan said it's Asr Rosh Hashanah Rabbim. Rosh Hashanah Yachid, they didn't say that it was Mutter. Vehu Savar, Shvila Narada, came into Shlichi Rabbim, Ki Rosh Hashanah Rabbim Damu. What happened here? He, why did he, he said he's over Rabbi Meir. Why did he say he's over Rabbi Meir? What did Rabbi Meir say? Rabbi Meir said you can't get it in Rosh Hashanah The Rechamim said you can't get it in Rosh Hashanah even. He thought he was only over Rabbi Meir because he was thought that he was in, in the Shvile Dinarda, he was in Rosh Hashanah Therefore he said, I'm only being over Rabbi Meir. I'm not being over the Chachamim who say that I can get a haircut. It just can't be. I can't get a haircut anywhere, says the Chachamim. Rabbi Meir says you can get it in public. Zak the Gemara. How much do you have to leave? Or how much do you have to stay away from their locks? Rabbi Meir says how much do you have to stay away from their locks? Amr of Malki, Amr of Adar, Barav, Shlosh, Ezbaos, Choruach. Three fingers in each direction. Amr of Hanina, Bredi, Ravika. Shvod, Shvachos, Vigumos, Rav Malki. We're not going to get into all of these cases. If you'd like to see them, you can look up the Rashi and then look it up in the respective places. But these three cases are Rav Malki, because we just quoted Rav Malki. Bloris, Efer, Maklo, Gvina is Rav Malki, Says Gemara, Amar of Papa, Masnisa nu Masnisa Rav Malkiya. Anytime you have a Mishnah or a Brice, it's Rav Malkiya. Shmasaisa Rav Malkiya. Anytime you have an Amora later than the Mishnah of the Brice, it's Rav Malkiya. Visimana, how do you remember that the Mishnah is Rav Malkiya? Masnisa Malkisa. The Mishnah is the Malkisa Malkiya. Na Malkiya. My Ben Hai, what's the Nafkamina between these two opinions? Whether it's the specific cases or Mishnah Masnisa, Ika Ben Hai is Shvachos. Shvachos is a Nafkamina because Shvachos is a Mishnah. If it's a Mishnah, according to Rav Pak, Rav, Rav Malkiya said it. And if you look on top, Shvachos, according to Rav Zchanina, Brady Ravika, Rav Malkiya did not say it, Rav Malkiya said it. Zak the Mishnah. This is the heart of Avodazar. We talk about Yaya Nesach. And Bishol, all these other things, and Gvinas Akam, etc. We're going to start it here. Eilu Devarim Shalov De Kachavim Asurin. Vesuran Iser Hana. These are the things of an Ove Kachavim that are Aser. And the Iser is an Iser Hana. You can't even get Hana. Not only can you not eat or drink, right? We know there are certain things that you can not eat or drink. And then there are certain things that are Aser by Hana. Non kosher food, you can't go ahead and eat or drink, but you can do business in non kosher food, seemingly. Basar Bechalav, if you have meat and milk, you can't eat or drink it, and you also can't make business from it. People don't necessarily know that. You can't sell cheeseburgers for a living. Their wine is an Isra Hana, because again, seemingly it was poured for Avodah Zarah. And their vinegar that originally was wine, as Rashi says, to exclude their vinegar that they bought from a Jew, that wouldn't be a problem, because Lamai said they don't pour vinegar to Avodah Zarah, they only pour wine, but if it's wine that turns into vinegar, we have to assume that when it was wine, they poured it to Avodah Zarah, and even the vinegar now that it's turned into will be Asr Ba'na. V'cheres Hadrayani, and the Cheres Hadrayani, where he says, Rashi, that it would, they would soak it in water and the Yayin would come out of it, you couldn't use that. The Oros Levuvin, as Rashi explains, they used to, a Avodah Zarah, they would go over to an animal and they would make a hole by the heart and they would rip out the heart. And they would use that for Avodah Zarah. So that skin, all that leather and skin of that animal would then be Asr Ba'na. 
Rashbag Omer Bizman Shakar Shalo Egolas or Mashoch Mach Rashbag says, no, that's only if you see that the tear in the animal's skin by the heart is round. That means that they took it out for Avodazar. If it's not round, if it's a straight slit, then they didn't remove the heart for Avodazar and you can use the skin. Basra Nichnas Avodaz Kachavim Matar. If you have Basra that's going into the place of worship, seemingly before it goes into the place of worship and comes out, you have Basra that's going to the place of worship and you intercept it on the way, you buy it on the way. That's mutter. It hasn't been set aside for Vodazar yet. But basra that comes out of the place of worship, even if one could argue that it's kosher, you cannot eat it because it's kizivchei mesim, because at the end of the day, it's seemingly been offered to Vodazar. Dear Rabbi Akiva. Hahochin letarfus, if they're going on their pilgrimages to Mecca. Asr lasseis velasseis iman. You can't do business with them on the way. Why? Because at the end of the day, if you do business with them on the way, so then they're going to take, either they're going to take the stuff that you give them and serve it to Avodah Zarah, or if they make a profit on you, then they're going to go in and thank the God of Avodah Zarah. Ve'abayin mutarin. Interestingly, but if they're coming from their pilgrimages, you don't have to assume that everything that they're bringing back was served to Avodah Zarah, and therefore you can do business with them. Again, you couldn't buy yain from them or other things, but you can buy regular things from them. Nodos ha'ovdei kachavim ve'kankenei, and their flasks, and their earthenware, kankenei, and their earthenware, um, I guess, jugs. containers, jugs. V'yain shal Yisrael konos ben, and there's wine of a Jew inside of them. Asurin v'isurin isra'na, you can never use that wine because we assume that it absorbed from the jug or the flask of the ovdei kachavim. Diver Rebbe Meir. That would be a whole question of, well, a little bit different, because that's not Ovdei Kochavim necessarily. That might be, uh, might, that might be Treif, but he's saying Sherry cask would be similar. He would say you can't drink the wine, but we're not going to go so far to say that the wine is Asr Bano. You'd be able to sell it. Hachartzanim v'hazagin, the seeds and the peels of grapes, shall Ovdei Kochavim, Asurin v'isurin Esrana, dear Rabbi Meir, because we assume that it's again been used for, the wine has been used for Yain Nesach, Fascinating. If it's lachen, then it's going to be asur. If it's wet, if it's yavesh for some reason, then which is more than twelve months, it would be mutter. We'll have to see if the Gemara discusses that. Why that should be? If it was used for avodah it was used. What's the difference? How old it is? Hamoris ugvinas base unki shall be chamer asurin beisuran israna. The shemen shall dagim of these places. And the cheese of base unki is asur and israna. Dear Rabbi Meir, v'chamer eini suran israna that the cheese would not be an Isra Hana, even of Besuniki, and we know that regular Gvinas Akum would be Aser, but it would not be Isra Bahana. Amar of Yehuda, Shol Rabbi Shemal Asra Yehoshua, Kshir Mahalchim Baderech, Amar Lohim Neyem Asru Gvinas Avdei Chamim, why is Gvinas Akum, which we'll have to talk more about, why is cheese made by an Akum Aser? Amar Lohim Neyem Shema Amidin Osa Bekeva Shal Nevela, because the way that you curdle cheese, you take milk and you curdle it, how do you curdle it? With the rennet of a Nevela. What's the rennet? The rennet is a piece of the, uh, the it's, a, it's the inside lining of the stomach. It's the inside lining of the stomach, the enzymes of the stomach. Today they use uh, vegetable rennet. They're able to make uh, mamidin, they're able to make mamidin with, uh, with vegetables. But back then they would curdle it with the rennet of the lining of a nevela. Amar lo, velo kebas ola chamura mi kebas nevela. I don't understand, why is that a problem? We know that the lining of the kevas of an ola, which you bring, is chamura mi kevas nevela, the amru kohen shedaito yafes sor frachaya. And yet we know that the keva, the rennet of an ola, korban ola, if the kohen wants to swallow it whole and raw, he's allowed to eat it. So what do you clearly see? You clearly see that the keva is not part of the actual animal, because an ola is aser bana, an ola you get me'ila for, and yet we see the Kohen's allowed to eat it. He didn't necessarily agree to him, and he said, I don't necessarily agree to you that a Kohen's allowed to eat it, but even if you say a Kohen's not allowed to eat it, everybody agrees that Mida Oraisa, it's not Aser. Mida Rabbanan, it might be Aser. But Velo Moalin, there's no Me'ila, one second, there's no Me'ila, because at the end of the day, everybody seems to agree that the Nevela, that the Kevas of an Ola, there's no Me'ila, because we consider it to be not part of the Ola. Exactly why the stomach or the enzyme of the stomach are not part of the Ola is interesting. But if you're going to go ahead and bring it to Kebas Nevela, then one can argue that the rennet of the Nevela is not considered to be part of the Nevela as well, and one should be able to use it in order to be Maimid the Gvina. So rather, what's the reason that you can't use Gvinas Akum if, in fact, it should be okay, the Keba shall the Vela, just like the Keba of the Ola is okay. Amr lo, mi mei shema, midinosa be Kebas egle avodas kochavim. 
because they used a keba, they used a rennet of an egel that was used for avodah zarah. Amar loim kein lama lo asru behana. So then, mamanashach, if it was used for avodah zarah and you're using the rennet, so then why is it only asr to eat it? Why is it not asr behana? He siul adavar acher. He didn't answer his question. He diverted him to another question. We'll have to figure out if, in fact, they're using the rennet from an avodah zarah egel, then it shouldn't only be. Asr ba'chila should be asr ba'na as well. Amar lo yishmal hechata kore kitovim dodecha miyayin in shir ashirim. How do you read kitovim dodecha miyayin or kitovim dodayich? Is it zacher in a keva? Amar lo kitovim dodecha. Amar lo ena davar kain. It's not dodayich. It's not in a keva. Amar lo ena davar kain. Sharei chaver malam in a love lereach shmanecha tovim. You clearly see that it's zacher. Again, he's just trying to divert him from his good question of lama lo asru ba'na. Yeah, you had a question, somebody? Okay. Why is why is he diverting? Because he doesn't want to answer the question. So maybe he didn't have a good answer. Says the Gemara, well, Rashi says the opposite, which I guess we'll get to. I didn't see it yet. If you look to the left, Rashi says, Lo It's a Mefarish Gemara. He should have known. Not that he didn't know the answer. You should know Gemara by heart. If you're asking me a silly question, we learned it in second grade, in first grade. So he didn't want to, he says, go learn a little bit and you'll figure out the answer. Talk to Gemara. Yayin minolan. Where do we know that Yayin of an Ove Kochavim is Aser? Amar Rabba Baravu Amar Kra Asher Chalav Zvachemo Yochelu Yishtu Yayin Nesecham. So what does it compare? It compares Yayin Nesech to Chalav Zvachemo. Ma Zevach Aser Ba'ana just like an offering to Avodah Zara is Aser Ba'ana Af Yayin Nami Aser Ba'ana so to wine that was poured to Avodah Zara is Aser Ba'ana so how do we know wine poured to Avodah Zara is Aser Ba'ana from the fact that a Zevach that's brought to Avodah Zara is Aser Ba'ana Zevach Hu Feminal how do we know that a Zevach that's brought to Avodah Zara is Aser Ba'ana Dekhtiva Yitzmedu Labal Por Vayochlu Zivchei Mesim Ma Mes Aser Ba'ana because it compares it to a mace. Just like a mace is Aser Bana, Av Zevach Nami Aser Bana. Since it compares a Zevach to a mace, so too, just like a mace you can't get enough from, you can't get enough from a Zevach. Um mace gufe minalan. How do you know that a mace is Aser Bana? Asya Sham Shame Egla Rufa. Ksivach of Atama Sham Miriam. Ksivasam Va Arfu Sham Esa Egla Benachal. So you know from an Egla Rufa that a mace is Aser Bana. Malahal and Aser Bana. Afkanas and Nami Aser Bana. Vahasa minalan. How do you know that an Egla Rufa is Aser Bana? Amar Debe Rabianai Kapara Ksiva Kikachim. It's a kapara. It says the word kapara, just like kachim. We know kachim is aser bana. And therefore, kachim is aser bana. Therefore, egla rufa is aser bana. Therefore, mace is aser bana. Therefore, a zevach to ove kacham is aser tana. And therefore, a yayin to avodah zara is aser to bana as well. What's the chiddush here? That if you have wine of an ove kacham, it's aser bana. It's aser to use. And if you have the chometz, which started off, again, that, that if, if they bought it from a Jew, it's fine. But chometz, that they originally had wine and it turned into vinegar, it's aser right now. Of course it's aser. Why the fact that it would turn into, into vinegar would get rid of the yisr that it was already poured to Avodah Zar? Um, Ravash, you're right. That's not the Kiddush. Ha'asal ha'ashmin and chometz shelanu b'yadovei kocham mitzare chosem b'yadovei kocham. The Kiddush is that if they buy our well, that's not what he's saying, but the Chiddush is that, first of all, they can buy our vinegar and then sell it. But the Chiddush is that if we give them vinegar to hold on to as a picadon, if you have one sign, that's enough. Why? We're not worried they're going to pour it to Avodah Zarah because they don't pour Chometz Avodah Zarah, which is what we learn here. And if you're worried that they're going to switch it and put non-kosher vinegar there, you don't have to be worried because once it has a stamp on it, once it has a seal, it's going to be okay. Am Ravi Lai Shaninu Yain Mevushal Shovin Kham Shay Mitklaso Yain Aser Yain Mevushal, which was originally regular Yain that wasn't cooked, and then they cook it, it's going to be Aser. Obviously, it's going to be Aser because they could have poured it to Avodah Zara before it was cooked. What's the Chiddush Pshita Mishum De If Shal Pakalei Sura? Just because they cook it, it's going to lose its Aser? No. Am Ravashi Ha'as Hashmin and Yain Mevushal Shalanu. No, it's teaching us that our Yain Mevushal, that was what. Biyar ovei kochavim, that's in the hands of an ovei kochavim, ain sarech chosem and tochosem. Again, you only have to label it once. Imishum in suche lo menasche. We're teaching it here that lemaise, they're not going to pour yayin mevushal. They don't pour 
poured wine. That's why they're allowed to go ahead and handle yayin mavushal only. And if it's because we're worried that they're going to switch it up, once it's labeled, so they're not going to be mezayifet. So again, the reason this is one of the bases of yayin mavushal. They pour only non yayin mavushal to avodah zara. That's why you can buy non yayin mavushal that's not been touched, that has a hechsha on it. But if there's non yayin mavushal that has a hechsha on it and a non Jew pours it, that's where the idea comes from because they would use that as avodah zara. And that's why specifically yayin mavushal you should be serving when you're around over. Day Kochan. Shkayach.